Since 1916, St. Nicholas has been a place of respite and welcoming. There are countless stories of immigrants who upon landing in Manhattan would go to the small Greek church to light a candle and thank God for their safe passage to the land of freedom and opportunity. As the Twin Towers rose behind her, St. Nicholas Church remained with her doors open, welcoming both parishioners and workers from the towers and surrounding businesses. Then September 11th happened. Much has been asked about what is next for St. Nicholas. After years of deliberations and hard work, a design has been chosen for St. Nicholas National Shrine. Located just down the block from its original location, the new St. Nicholas will stay true to its roots as both an Orthodox church with a full liturgical life as well as a place of prayer and solace for all people. St. Nicholas must now take on a new identity as more than just a parish, as an institution of our archdiocese. It will belong to each of us. With its expanded mission, St. Nicholas will be a place of consolation, of education, of culture, and of growth. It will represent our beliefs as Americans that our freedom of religion is paramount, and in that freedom that we as Orthodox Christians believe in the light of the resurrection. St. Nicholas National Shrine is not just for us, for you and for me. It is a national shrine belonging to our entire community. It belongs to future generations. In the years to come, our children and grandchildren will pass through the site formerly known as Ground Zero. They will look up at the soaring towers around them and then at the void of the memorial before them. They will tour the museum and see the remains of the artifacts and then they will emerge and shining bright from 130 Liberty Street will be St. Nicholas National Shrine. It will be a beacon of light and understanding for years to come. It will be witness that even in the face of tragedy, there is hope and life. There is resurrection.
him the blessing. Blessed is our God always, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages, ευλογητός ο Θεός ημών, πάντοτε νυν και αή, και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Άγιος ο Θεός, Άγιος ισχυρός, Άγιος αθάνατος ελέησον ημάς. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, forgive our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Pater imon o en disuranis, el theto i vasilia su, yenithito to thelima su, os en urano ke pitis gis, ton arton imon ton epiusion, dos imis simeron, ke afes imin da ofilimata imon, os ke imis afiemen so filete simon, ke imis en engis imas ispirasmon, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Του πατρό και του ιού και του αγίου πνεύματο νικαίοι και στου αιώνα των αιώνων. The reading is from the book of Joshua. 
Now the people came up from the Jordan on the 10th of the first month and camped at Gilgal on the eastern edge of Jericho. Then Joshua set up those 12 stones, which they had taken from the river Jordan at Gilgal. He said to the sons of Israel, when your children ask their fathers in time to come saying, what are these stones? Then you shall tell your children, Israel crossed this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed, just as the Lord your God had done to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed, that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, so that you may fear the Lord your God forever. And the reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is with for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, he will not also give us all things with him. Who shall bring charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died, yes, who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of the Father of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? It is written, for thy sake we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Let us attend. The Lord said, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house but it did not fall because it had been founded upon the rock. And 
peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have come to this sacred site, with faith, reverence, and in awe of God, let us pray to the Lord. For the beloved families of the victims and heroes killed in the terrorist attacks of September 11th, and for the loved ones of the first responders who since then have fallen asleep, that they may all be granted continued comfort and strength from above. Let us pray to the Lord. For the souls of the innocent victims and heroes of the unjust terrorist attacks of September 11th, and for their families and friends, let us pray to the Lord. Demetrius, for the members of the Holy Eparchial Synod and the most reverend hierarchs praying with him, for the reverend presbyters, for the deacons in Christ, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Bishop and Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, let us pray to the Lord. For our nation, the President, and for all the members of the armed forces, for this state and city, our governor and mayor, for the members of the police and fire departments, for the leadership and staff of the Port Authority, and for all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. That this water may be sanctified by the visitation, power, and energy of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Furthermore, we pray for the rebuilding of the destroyed St. Nicholas Church here at the World Trade Center, that it may become again a shrine of comfort and prayer, and also a visible testimony of renewed faith hope and reconciliation for all those who visit this sacred site. Let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy upon us and protect us, O God, by your grace. <laughs> Commemorating our all holy, pure, most blessed and glorious Lady the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves in one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Let us pray.
pray to the Lord. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear us as you condescend to be baptized in the Jordan and sanctify the waters. Bless us all as in the bowing of our heads we show our commitment to you and make us worthy by the sprinkling of this water to be filled with your sanctification. May it be, O Lord, for the health of our souls and bodies. For you are the sanctification of our souls and bodies, and to you we ascribe glory, thanksgiving, and worship, together with your Father who is without beginning, and your all holy, good, and life-giving spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. So son that has just been sanctified and used to bless the site of our new church was water taken from the two pools across the way at the National September 11th Memorial. And it was offered by families of Greek Orthodox Christians lost on September 11th. As we commence the rebuilding of St. Nicholas, in place of the traditional cornerstone, we are constructing two cairns that call to mind the Twin Towers, the grievous loss of 9-11, and the destruction of the original St. Nicholas Church. The cairn is a heap of stones that commemorates an important life-altering event in the history of any people. For us today, we ask, we ask, as is written in the book of the prophet Joshua, what are these stones? For Joshua and the children of Israel at Gilgal, the 12 stones were their sign of arrival in the promised land and of the journey that was behind them. For us today, the 24 stones are a symbol of what was lost and our responsibility never to forget, but also of the journey that lies before us. For they call us not only to rebuild this house of prayer for all people, but to build a better world where love conquers hatred, peace defeats war, and, li and life triumphs over death. Theodore Bosinellis and Bill Crane on behalf of the Nicholas and Anna Burroughs Foundation.
John on behalf of himself, his wife Mary, and family. Michael Psaros on behalf of himself, his wife Robin, and their family. the second and Philip Rule on behalf of their grandparents Alex and Faye Spanos and family. <laughs> William Dukas on behalf of himself, his wife Elizabeth and family. on behalf of himself, his wife Paula, and family. Maria Alwyn on behalf of herself and family. himself, his wife Catherine, and family. Catopodis on behalf of the parishioners of St. Nicholas Church. Peggy Sotirjos on behalf of the Jaharis Family Foundation. George Tsandikos on behalf of the members of Leadership 100. Aphrodite Schiadas on behalf of the ladies of the Philoptochos Society. Commander Anthony Limbarakis on behalf of the Archons of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. Dennis Meal on behalf of Faith, an endowment for Orthodoxy and Hellenism. Supreme President Philip Frangos on behalf of AHEPA. Oh, 
Ambassador Vasilios Cascarellis on behalf of the Stavros Niarchos Foundation. Chief Louis Kumutsos, on behalf of the Port Authority Police and the 37 heroes who died that day. Mayor David Dinkins. Governor George E. Pataki. Public Advocate Letitia James on behalf of the citizens of the city of New York. Senator Dean Skelos. Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. Authority Executive Director Patrick Foy on behalf of Governor Cuomo and the Port Authority and the 84 Port Authority souls who lost their lives that day. And on Thula Katsimatidis in memory of my brother John and all the beautiful souls that perished that day. Upon the unshakable rock of your commandments, O Lord, make firm this church to be built unto the ages of ages. Epitin Petran Taftin ton endolonsu, pandodiname kirie, stereoson tin melusan ikodomithine krisian to ayu nikolau, iseona eonos. Amen. Peace be with all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God of our salvation, we give thanks unto you on this auspicious day as we formally commence the rebuilding of St. Nicholas Church. Establish it once again as a house of prayer, of peace, of hope, and of love, and as a witness that good shall always triumph over evil, 
May it be a beacon of your light and a source of comfort and inspiration for all people who shall enter once again St. Nicholas New Church. As you inspired Moses to raise your tabernacle in the desert, Solomon to build your home in Jerusalem, and enlightened Joshua to remember your marvels in Stone and Gilgal, and Emperor Justinian to build St. Sophia, so also inspired us to remember you always as we build this house of prayer for all peoples where your love will ever be the foundation we lay this day. We trust and take comfort in you, knowing that you are a compassionate God. Continue to heal the wounded hearts of those who lost loved ones as a result of tragic events of terrorist attack of September 11, and give them renewed courage and hope. Keep our nation and our beloved state and city under your heavenly protection and grant them your peace through the intercessions of St. Nicholas and all the saints. For you are a merciful and loving God, a God of healing and compassion. And to you we ascribe glory, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Glory to you, O God, glory to you. May Christ, our true God, through the intercessions of his most pure and holy mother, through the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless heavenly powers, the supplications of the honorable, glorious prophet and forerunner John the Baptist, the holy, glorious and all praise apostles, the holy, glorious and victorious martyrs, our venerable and God-bearing fathers of our Holy Father among the saints, St. Nicholas, Bishop of Myra, the wonder worker, the holy and righteous ancestors of the Lord, Joachim and Anna, of the holy and glorious and all praise apostle Luke the Evangelist, whose memory we commemorate today, and of all your saints, have mercy on us and save us for he is good and loves mankind. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Diefhon ton agion pateron imon, Kyrie Jesus Christe o Theos, Eleison, que son imam. Of our holy Master, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Here ends the very special ceremony of the sanctification of the world and the blessing and the groundbreaking and lay the foundation of our new church. Please be seated for some addresses. Thank you, Your Eminence. It's my distinct pleasure to invite the following speakers, and I'd like to begin with Governor George Pataki. Please give them your undivided attention. Good afternoon. What a wonderful day. And what an appropriate day that the sun is now reflecting as we commemorate this groundbreaking of St. Nicholas. You know, when I was governor on September 11th, and in the days thereafter as we assessed the magnitude of the loss, I remember Archbishop Demetrios and Father Alex and others came in coming and saying, yes, we lost almost 3,000 lives. Yes, we lost the heart of our commerce, but we also lost St. Nicholas Church. And I remember saying to them, do not worry. You have my word 
that when we rebuild Ground Zero, and we will, St. Nicholas Church will be a part of it. It, it was easy to say. It was harder to do. We developed the brilliant master site plan that was developed by um, Daniel Liebeskin, and we made sure that in that master site plan, there was right here, St. Nicholas. But after I left office, and as that construction began, they began to relook and rethink everything that happened, and there came a point where the powers that be and the Port Authority said, sorry, there's no room for St. Nicholas. Well, I have to say that we are blessed with an extremely, not just faithful and divine near leadership of the Greek Orthodox Church here in America and in New York, but also an extremely powerful hierarchy of the Greek Orthodox Church here in, in New York and in America, and an extremely influential and powerful, powerful Greek-American community. And so many of you rose up and said, this is not going to happen. You're not going to rebuild without St. Nicholas. And I can recall having a press conference right down there with Archbishop Demetrius and other distinguished members of the clergy, with George Demos and other members of the Greek Orthodox uh, faith saying, this shall not happen. And with their support, with God's prayers and help, and with the new leadership, Pat Foy and others at the Port Authority, today we are commemorating and celebrating the groundbreaking here today. And how appropriate is this? Take a look around. You see right there the symbol of remembrance, the memorial and the memorial museum, which is so important and the center of all we do here, so we will never forget those souls who died here. And today, our, my heart goes out to all those families who lost loved ones, to the Katsimatidis families and so many others. We will never forget, and the memorial is the center of that. You look around and you see these soaring buildings, symbol of commerce, symbol of our confidence, symbol of our belief that tomorrow will be better and we can soar to new heights. But what was missing was that rock. And as we listen to Archbishop Demetrios this morning talk about that rock, that rock of faith, we had remembrance, we had commerce, but without St. Nicholas, we did not have faith. Well, now today, we have remembrance, we have commerce, and we have that rock. We have that faith right here at St. Nicholas. And, and let me just say one more comment. How appropriate that that rock of faith is St. Nicholas. Because when I think of why we were attacked on September 11th, it wasn't because of anything we do wrong. It wasn't because of mistakes we made. It is because of what we do right as Americans. Our belief in freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom to choose our own leaders, freedom to worship as we see fit. And where did those freedoms come from? The freedoms we hold so dear in America today had their origins in Greece in the democracies of the Greek city-states. It was the Greek city-states that gave, our belief, gave us our belief today in freedom. And it will now be the Greek Orthodox Church that is the rock of faith that anchors all that is done here at Ground Zero. So thank you all, Archbishop, distinguished members of the clergy. What a wonderful today. What a wonderful day. Today, my name is Yurgos Patakis. Congratulations. Thank you, Governor. And now, please welcome architect Santiago Calatrava. Eminences, uh, dear friends, uh, it is an honor for me to speak here. I want to tell you that uh, at September 11, I was in Athens in the, uh, helping in the construction of the Olympic ring. Some days later, <coughs> being in the part of Athens called Plaka, I saw in the walls of uh, uh, the Acropolis that there was columns 
part, as part of the walls. And the person accompanying me explained to me that this was the columns of the ancient Parthenon, of the previous Parthenon, who being destroyed at the time, you know, was um, uh, the Athenians rebuilt the, the whole Acropolis and took the columns, putting there and exhibit them in front of the whole population as part of the reconstruction, even as the archaeologues, uh, they show us, uh, they took all the debris of the sculptures and entombed them respectfully and <clears throat> built uh, the new Acropolis and the new Parthenon, who is a paradigm for architects even until our days. The result of all this effort was also the so-called uh, century of Pericles, in which, uh, as uh, <clears throat> Governor Pataki uh, very well pointed before, not only the arts, not only the sculpture, the literature, the philosophy, who are the basis of this, what we call the, uh, our civilization, but also democracy was born. In a way, you see, it's, it's, it's impossible to establish a link between this, what happened at the time, and this, what is happening in this uh, place. And God made inspire us, you know, to do a similar achievement to us and the generations to come. When I, was, uh, uh, when I uh, uh, went into the design of this church, I can't resume it like that. I was uh, inspired by Hagia Sophia, which in my eyes is uh, the Parthenon of the Orthodoxy. And uh, we have uh, uh, done this building, who virtually is here over our heads and already uh, gathering us not yet there. So I would like at this point as architect and as a worker also as I am, think on the workers that will uh, put the hands to build that. God uh, may bless them that we can achieve this uh, endeavor without any accident. Then uh, they are their hands who will deliver us, as His Eminency say, the uh, house for pray, the house for love, the house for peace, and the House for Reconciliation. Thank you very much. You. Now please welcome Senator Charles Schumer. Good afternoon, everybody, and your eminence and your eminences, members of the clergy, members of the distinguished community, Greek-American community here and from all over the world, my colleagues in government, Governor Pataki, Senator Skilos, Mayor Dinkins, Tish James, the people from the Port Authority, and last but certainly not least, one of the greatest senators I have served with uh, who is so active in this community, Paul Sarbanes. I see Senator Nadler, Senator Maloney are here, Senator Generis, Assemblywoman Maliotakis, uh, and many others. Anyway, I would like to take a moment in remembrance of those who passed on 9-11. And at this moment, let us pray for their families and loved ones who are with us today. Today, while we bless this ground, in quiet remembrance, let us also celebrate and carry hope in our hearts. It has been such a long time coming, but now we finally have plans to rebuild a shrine for St. Nicholas near the 9-11 memorial. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, this sh shrine will represent all the resilience, fortitude, and strength of St. Nicholas' congregation and of all New Yorkers. While there were holes in all of our hearts, especially those who lost loved ones, we did not wallow in grief or give up hope, but carried on and worked to rebuild what was lost. This shrine will be a testament to the courage of our spirit that our city demonstrated after that terror. That's why it's so beautiful that this shrine to be will be a place for all faiths, believers and non-believers alike. That is why it is fitting that our great architect took designs from other shrines and churches 
from all over the globe. After 9-11, we picked up and held up, each of us holding one another through the most difficult of times. It is only right that we remember, pray, pay tribute to those who were lost together as one New York here at this beautiful St. Nicholas Shrine. Let this be a place of solace and of peace and of hope. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you, Senator. Now I'd like to call Mr. Pat Foy, representing Governor Cuomo and the Port Authority. Your Eminence, Bishops, Reverend Clergy, Distinguished Guests, Senator Schumer, Members of Congress Nadler and Maloney, Mayor Dinkins, colleagues in government. I'm honored to speak at this historic ceremony today and to represent Governor Andrew Cuomo. As you know, St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church was the sole house of worship destroyed on this site in acts of evil in 2001. Today's gr ground blessing of the new St. Nicholas National Shrine represents rebirth and revival. Just as one of the best known stories of Greek mythology is the rising of the phoenix from the ashes, and just as the Greek Orthodox Church celebrates the birth, mourns the death, and praises the resurrection, today we celebrate the rebuilding of St. Nicholas and the blessing of the hallowed land on which it will stand. Thirteen years ago, the church lay in ruins. Today we witnessed the reversal of that sacrilege. Five years ago, sadly and unimaginably, the Greek Orthodox Church had no choice but to sue a then recalcitrant Port Authority to assure the rebuilding of St. Nicholas. Two men, one a leading religious leader, the other a chief executive, worked hard to end that dispute. Archbishop Demetrius and Governor Cuomo, shortly after his taking office, signed an agreement which led to the selection of this site as the home of the new St. Nicholas National Shrine and to the ground blessing we observe today. I note, too, the important role that Senator Dean Skelos played at that time. Your Eminence, I congratulate you and the Greek Orthodox Church on today's ground blessing, which in historical context is comparable to the laying of the cornerstone for the new St. Patrick's Cathedral in 18, 1858 by Archbishop John Hughes a legendary and beloved figure in his church, as the eminence is in his. Our governor and the entire state of New York look forward to the future consecration of what will be an iconic house of worship and to greeting those who come here to worship at St. Nicholas National Shrine or seek solace in the Bereavement Center. On behalf of Governors Cuomo and Christie, my colleagues at the Port Authority, beginning with the Board of Commissioners led by John Degnan and Scott Reckler, the Chief of the Port Authority Police Department and Archon Louis Kamutsis, Steve Plate, Director of World Trade Center Construction. We're all extraordinarily proud of the role the Port Authority has played in getting us today to where we are today. I'll also note the contributions of Dennis Meal, Chair of the Battery Park City Authority, and an Archon himself. Congratulations. And now please welcome Metropolitan Methodius of Boston. He will be reading a message from our revered ecumenical patriarch, pa patriarch His All Holiness, Bartholomew. Your Eminence Archbishop Demetrius of America, Exarch of the Ecumenical Throne, beloved brother hierarchs, distinguished guests, our dearly beloved Christ-loving clergy and laity of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, grace be to you and peace from God. It is on this great and historic occasion that we greet all of you from the Martyric Church 
of Constantinople with much love and joy as you gather together to officially commence the rising from the ashes of our beloved St. Nicholas National Shrine located in the heart of New York at the World Trade Center. Naturally, much has already been undertaken towards achieving this goal, which we commend and congratulate. However, perhaps now more than ever before, we encourage you to come together as one, similar to the manner in which the early Greek immigrants united and struggled for its original construction through their Christian humility and poverty as it was for our blessed father and hierarch St. Nicholas, these men and women achieved great heights and riches. What they started then will continue now. What they once envisioned for the generations of souls nourished in this holy place will be reestablished for future pilgrims journeying here to encounter personally our Lord's joy and love. May your labors, perseverance, dedication, and faith manifest in the construction of this sacred temple. We pray it will truly become a haven of the tempest tossed, a comfort for mourning, a healing of passions, a refuge of the weak, a sign of victory over evil, and the pouring of the heavens upon the earth. May the works of your hands be blessed with prosperity, longevity, and every good endowment and perfect gift from above. At the Ecumenical Patriarchate, the 18th of October, 2014, your fervent supplicant before God, Bartholomew, Archbishop of Constantinople, New Rome, and Ecumenical Patriarch. And now please welcome our Father, His Eminence, Archbishop Demetrius. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be jubilant and fully enjoy it. Let us sing with the psalmist to the Lord, for he has been superbly glorified in the past, in the present, at this solemn moment, and in this sacred place. Your eminences, beloved and respected brothers, of the Holy Eparchial Synod of our Archdiocese, your eminences and your graces, brother hierarchs of the various jurisdictions in America, Senator Schumer, Senator Salbanis, Madam, let me call her Bubulina, Senator Skelos, representatives of Mayor de Blasio and Governor Cuomo, Mayor Dinkins, Chief of the Police of Port Authority here, Mr. Kumutsos, Mr. Ambassador from Greece, leaders of various organizations of, and federations of the Archdiocese, great benefactors and donors for the building of this church, beloved brothers and sisters and friends. We remember the days after September 11, 2001. We remember this very place filled with ruins, hiding under piles of debris the pulverized remains of 3,000 innocent victims, breathing a very heavy air 
saturated with dust of stone, wood, iron, and with tiny particles of human bodies. We remember walking with heavy heart to the specific place where our St. Nicholas Church stood as a building for more than a century. The church, the location was exactly there. The church was not there. Instead, we saw a big hall with a depth of seven to 10 feet, at the bottom of which there were fragments of stones and remainings of a sometime in the past charming little church. We stood there frozen, paralyzed, and cried. And looking at this amorphous compilation of destroyed sacred material, which used to be a church. At that tragic moment, when we were viewing the results of a barbarous killing of 3,000 people, of a horrible destruction of a church, and of the senseless destruction of magnificent buildings at that time, we would not do anything else but just pray and say that this church should be rebuilt as well as the whole of the former World Trade Center. In the first weeks after September 11, we had a meeting mentioned already by Governor Pataki. We have a meeting at his office. Governor Pataki was very clear in declaring that the state was committed, committing itself to the rebuilding of St. Nicholas Church, which was, of course, destroyed that way. We assured him, and we repeated our assurances a number of times, that St. Nicholas was a church that would be not only a parish church, but a national shrine offering spiritual comfort and healing, and that would be a place of bereavement for people suffering, especially for families that have lost loved ones. A number of activities for the resurrection of St. Nicholas Church started immediately. The people of the parish of St. Nicholas, led by Father John Romas, please, he's sitting here, and the people of the Archdiocese of America. And let me mention some names that were involved from the beginning to the, these days, namely Bishop Antonius of Fasciani, Mr. Michael Jaharis, Father Alexander Carluzos, Mr. Jerry Dimitriou, and uh, the late Mr. Dimos, plus Mr. Mill and other people. They, we start working day and night, and this happened for the last 13 years. Governor Pataki continued to support the effort, as well as the people of the Port Authority. Let me mention here specifically Mr. Pat Foyer, who spoke this morning, and Mr. Steve Plate helping to a tremendous degree the process. And then we have also 
Mayor Giuliani in this last part of his service as a mayor, Mayor Bloomberg. Senator Schumer has been always eager to assist. Senator Skelos has been instrumental. And we have also quite a number of other people who day and night supported the effort. It was, however, through the decisive and really inspirational action of Governor Cuomo that was able, we were able finally to sign the documents, ratifying what should be then St. Nicholas. So then, after 13 years of tremendous, non-stopping, non-sleeping efforts, we have today, by the grace of God, unbelievably, this ceremony of groundbreaking ceremony. With this ceremony today, we gratefully start the process for the resurrection of the Church of St. Nicholas. We joyfully anticipate the day when we will enter by the grace of God the new church which thanks to the superb design by the most distinguished architect Santiago Calatrava and his wife and his people will constitute a masterpiece of church architecture in the center of this World Trade Center. This church, as a building, will certainly be a monument of cultural and artistic excellence. Cultural and artistic excellence. But it will be also a place of prayer and worship. It will be a place of serenity and quietness, a place of peaceful, like a peaceful island in the midst of a turbulent ocean. It will be a refuge for people in need of spiritual comfort regardless of their specific religious beliefs or unbeliefs. Above all, this resurrected St. Nicholas Church will be a monument declaring the victory of good over evil, of love over hatred, of the ultimate power of life over death and destruction, it will be a luminous window opening the view to the reality of God, the perspective of hope, and the healing presence of the divine in our wounded world. Therefore, let us be jubilant today. As the psalmist says, let us fully enjoy since this is the day that the Lord has made. And let us give thanks to the one eternal, omnipotent, loving, and merciful God who deem us worthy in the noon of this day of 18th of October to be part of a historic event that will be stay not only for us, not only for our children, but for the generations to come, not only New Yorkers, not only Americans, but from all over the world. We thank all the people who are present here. We apologize to the people who are on the low level of Liberty Street you see, one of the big advantages is that the church will be on an elevated level. And therefore, 
at this moment, unfortunately, it was impossible to have everyone on that level. But when the church is built, everyone would be able to come up and enjoy. And allow me to express many thanks to the many people that organized this extremely complicated ceremony and have secured the presence of so many people, the choir, and also special thanks to the lady of ceremonies today who lost a brother on September 11. May God be with all of us. May God be with this nation. May God give his peace and love to the whole world. Have a beautiful 18 of October day. The choir is going to chant, sing, God bless America. Everyone could join. And this is the beginning of the procession. Yes. OK. We also want to invite Georgia Linares in singing God Bless America. We'll all sing along with her. And please remember to sign your name on the wall of the church on Liberty Street at the end of this ceremony. Thank you so much for honoring us with your participation and your presence. Georgia. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God 